how forcible are right words. The word of God in the mouth of his messenger is power. Somebody said God will make you. As you listen to God's anointed messenger, Pastor Cornelius Hamner, get set to be launched into a realm of all realm possibilities. You're welcome again in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to take a journey through the word of God very um, spontaneously. And I will sort of um, start from where I started again at the all night. Amen. So for some of you who are at the all night, it might look to you like you are hearing the same. Amen. It might. Weapons of warfare. Weapons of warfare. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. The Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual, um, the rulers of darkness of this world, and uh, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13 said, As a result of this, take to you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, I mean verse 14, having your loins get about with the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, verse 15, and your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall quench, you shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked. Amen. And take the element of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let's stop there for this morning. The Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus Christ. And during the all night, I ministered on the shield of faith. I'm, I'm going to start from there and then um, with another shield as quickly as possible this morning. Hallelujah. The Bible said in that Ephesians chapter 6, especially verse 16 that we just read, it said, above all, taking the shield of faith. Now that means that as far as the warfare of life is concerned, the shield of faith is very, very, very important. The shield of faith is paramount as far as battle is concerned. With the shield of faith, we don't just quench some of the attacks of the devil, but the Bible said with it we are able to quench all the fiery dust of the wicked one. All the fiery, all the attacks of the devil, all the manipulations of the devil, all the orchestrations of the devil, everything that the devil can ever do can be tackled and handled by the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith. We look at some scriptures like I did at the all night just for us to be able to comprehend how potent faith is. But I'll be faster. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 30 to 33, Jesus was talking to us about people who were worried about what to wear, what to eat, what to drink. And he said to them that even the lilies of the field that don't take thought for themselves yet they are well clothed it talks about the best of the air who do not sow but definitely they receive they receive food on daily basis and it goes on to say in verse 30 that if god can clothe the grass of the field which today is here and tomorrow can be thrown into the fire he said how much more shall he clothe you O ye of little faith so what he was saying there is your troubles and your worries about what to eat and what to drink is a function of inadequate faith or no faith at all. You move from there and in the same Matthew chapter 8 verse 26, Matthew 8 26, the Bible tells us that Jesus was crossing to the other side of the land passing through the river to the other side of the land with his disciples and suddenly there arose storms against him and the bible said the disciples were crying and they were crying and said lord don't you care that we perish but jesus woke up and said to them why are you fearful O ye of little faith and of course jesus would beat the wind and everything became calm that is their preservation was at the mercy of their faith 
Storms of life will arise, but by faith you can calm the storms of life. Storms come to everybody. Challenges come to everybody. Amen. Everybody is faced with issues day by day. But we tackle these issues by what? By faith. The storm rising against you is not the problem. But you align the storm to override you is where the problem is. Problems, storms, challenges arise against everybody. But we tackle it by the shield of faith. Jesus said, oh you of little faith. Why are you afraid? You go on to the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 29. Matthew 9 29 and you will see someone who was sick and needed help from Jesus. And Jesus asked him, this one you need me to pray for you. Do you believe that I, the son of man, am able to do this thing? Do you really believe that I have the capacity for what you are looking for? And the man said, yes, I believe. And in Matthew to 9:29, he touched their eyes and said to them, According to what? According to your faith, be it unto you. So healing that was manifested, manifested because of what? Faith. Even though the power is resident in Christ, but it takes faith to tap into that power. Amen. It takes faith to tap into it. I'm ministering, I'm standing here right now. Every unction that God has called me with on this assignment and every unction that I have contacted by personal intimacy with him is available. Amen. But it takes faith to connect it. It takes faith to be able to partake of whatever is being carried. It takes faith. So he said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Have you ever read the scripture where the Bible said that um, a man that was left from the mother's womb was brought to a meeting, sitting down, and the Bible said Peter was preaching, and Peter perceived that this guy has faith to be healed. So he left everybody and went in the direction of that one, and laid hands on him, and the man began to walk. What happened was that, by virtue of the faith, he made the walk easier for Peter. Have you ever heard about Jesus of Nazareth himself? Who went all the way to Jerusalem, and the Bible said he could not do mighty works. Yes, Jesus himself could not do mighty works because of their unbelief. The same power he had been carrying, the same power is there. But he could not do mighty works because of the unbelief of the people. The power is present, but the faith is not there to connect. So the Bible said he wept and said, oh, how is it that you are so faithless? The Bible said he marveled at their unbelief. He marveled at their own belief. So without faith, it's not possible to connect anything that you desire and you trust God for. You connect it by faith. Look at James chapter 1, James 1 verse 5 down to verse 7. Please, James chapter 1. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and obey them not, and it shall be given to him but let him ask how let him ask how in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toast for let not that man think he shall receive anything of the lord so whatever is not of faith the bible says sin so let that man not think that he can receive what he's asking from the Lord because he does not believe the Lord in which from whom he's asking. Let him not. Then he goes on to say in verse 8 that such an un a double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. He's unstable in all his ways. Let him not think that he can receive anything. So it is to you according to what? To your faith. In the book of Matthew chapter 14 verse 31. Again, we see the difference between faith and unbelief. Here was Peter. Jesus had asked him, come to me. And Peter was walking on water to go to Jesus because he had faith. But the moment he began to doubt and he began to look at the wind, he began to sink. The same Peter, the same water, he had been walking on the water. Nothing changed except his faith. So when his faith changed, then the circumstance changed. 
it simply means that as long as faith is intact, the circumstance will obey. When faith begins to shake, then the circumstance too will begin to shake. Because Jesus said to him, why did you doubt, O oh, you of what? Little faith. But I see it on the screen. O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? In the book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 28, you will see a woman who normally was an unbeliever. She was from um, a country that do not serve God. But this woman began to hear about the good things that Jesus was doing. She was hearing and hearing. And so her daughter was sick, afflicted. And she came to Jesus and she said, I need healing for my daughter. Jesus looked at her and said to her, it is not good to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. Because according to scriptures, those who are unbelievers, the Gentiles, are referred to as dogs. They return to their vomit. And those who are children of God are entitled to the bread, which is the healing. Healing is children's bread. The woman said to him, instead of getting angry and say, oh, 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 because I came to you, you are talking rubbish. The woman said, well, I know that I'm a dog, but even dogs take the crumbs that fall from their master's table. So I'm here for the crumbs. Jesus said, woman, great is your faith. If you have not seen such a great faith in Israel, the whole of Israel have not seen Woman, what did he say? Great is thy faith, be it unto you as you will. And her daughter was made whole the same hour. The same hour. The same hour. The same hour. Hallelujah. I was on the crusade ground some time ago, and this woman came with her jalabia. You know, is it? No, it's not jalabia, hijab. She came with her hijab, like that. Raw. There is no doubting that this one is raw. But she had a waist condition, couldn't bend, was afflicted. But when she heard the word of God being preached, she was there in the crowd. And while preaching the word of God in the midst of it, suddenly there were some manifestations of accuracy of word of knowledge, picking people by, by their age and saying what the case was. And, and, and then her faith came alive. And when it was time and I was praying for the sick, this woman, complete like that came to the front. The power of God landed on her before I could say anything. Her faith put something. She came on the floor where she stood up, the waist was loosed. She was shouting before you know Holy Ghost baptism came on her. Amen. Meanwhile, those who say that they are children of God, they are there on the crusade ground watching movie. We connect by what? By faith, it is to you according to your faith. This morning I decree someone's faith is coming up and your faith is catching something in the name of Jesus. I say your faith is catching something in the name of Jesus. But as these three scriptures that are so conclusive, Matthew 17, 20, about faith. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, Jesus cried, they were asking Jesus, why could not we cast the devil out? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief, because if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, be what? Remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Simply means that faith connects us to the realm of cheap possibilities. When the things that people say are completely impossible become your possibilities. That's what we call record breaking. That's what we call setting the pace by faith. Matthew 21, 21, he repeated the same thing in another way. Jesus looked at a tree and said, no man will eat of it from today. And the tree dried up. So the people were wondering, ha! What kind of man is this that the trees are obeying him? Then Jesus answered and said to them, Verily I said to you, if you have faith and you doubt not, you shall not only do this thing which I have done to the fig tree, but also you shall say to this mountain, if you be thou removed and be what? Cast it with it, and it shall be done. And it shall be done. So Jesus was saying, I will pray by faith and you cannot pray by faith. Hallelujah. It's very important to understand that where your faith ends determines the end of the realities of God you can experience in your life. Because God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And if you are going to relate with the spirit realm, you need faith. What is faith? Now faith is the substance of 
the, of um, things so for the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Then he now goes and said, by, for by it the elders obtained a good report. What he said, faith is believing in the invisible. For example, we are worshiping here now, but there is no too sure that God is here. Say, can you see with your physical eyes? No. Maybe at times he can permit us to see patients of maybe angels moving or something happening in the auditorium somewhere that he wants to pay attention to. But nobody sees God in just moving on the road and seeing spirit everywhere. You run mad. Amen. <laughs> But I know for sure that he is here right now. How? By the eyes of faith. When I pray in my room, I know he's hearing me. By the eyes of faith. When I speak, I know 100% to my hundred, sir. No doubt. When I speak 100%, that no doubt that God is here what I'm saying. Amen. No doubt. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. In the name of Jesus, I decree the realm of possibilities open to you this morning. That amen can be louder than that. I remember when I began to understand a little about God at the age of 12. One day I was reading my small Gideon Bible. Just reading it. And then I came to Psalm 89 verse 34. He said, my covenant will I not break. Neither will I alter the words that have gone out of my lips. Small boy, you know, we believe anything raw. So I looked at it, he said, covenant will he not break. Okay, this God they are talking about you. I go to church, I hear about you. I see some men talking about you. I hear my parents praying to you. Me, I don't want all this superficial thing of there's one God somewhere I don't understand. Are you real? Small boy, 12 years old, alone. Are you real? Now, if you are real, I don't want you to appear to me here now. But I want us to have a discussion between me and you in the room here. But by the way to happen, I will know whether you are real or not. At the age of 12. So at the age of 12, I entered the covenant. See, I can say it freely now because it's far gone. At the age of 12, and I said to God, Oh Lord, I don't know if you are here hearing me, but I believe you are hearing me. I will never play anything around sexual immorality. I will never play around ladies. I will never mess up my life. Thank you. And I said, Lord, the way I will know that you have heard me is that you will make me super intelligent from this day. Just in my own language. That's not the exact word, but in my own little child language. And that was a simple prayer. But when the next term resumed, I became an impossible case. Do you understand what I mean impossible? For example, in mathematics, I, I used to score maybe 49 over 100, 40 over 100, those kind of things. But in English, I was a bit better. Now, this young man, my friend, Mwekul Lionel in Cameroon, I said, can you teach me mass? Because he will be scoring just mass is like water for him. Teach me mass and he can fail English for Africa. <laughs> so I said, teach me English. I, teach me mass, I teach you English. So we will meet every day after school hours in his place or at my place and then I'll teach him English to teach me mass. On that one month, two months, it was like a dream. We wrote the next exam. And they say, ah, the highest, the highest. But I said, so super is the highest. The teacher said, all of you are talking, you don't know anything yet. Not only, everybody went behind. Eh? In that mass, including the person that taught me. I swept him back. Then in English, she swept him back. Oh, yeah. Amen. What? I was reading for common entrance and first school living service. The person I was staying in the house said, you read too much. Go and drop away. I said, I want to be the best in the whole town put together. The students are laughing. Say, look at you can dream. So the way put things you used to read this as entire your age at the age of 12. Say, watch and see. The result came out. I was not in the country when it came out, but it was announced on air. I had the best result. The whole town put together, my result was number one. Now, I began, this was a prayer I prayed alone in my room. But this was the manifestation in the private. Amen. Now, that followed me through life. Waek, jump, 
university. He followed me till tomorrow. It became a deposit. Then after I passed through the schooling system, that one, it now became a man. They can drop on people who are interested. Amen. So even though it didn't come to see me face to face, that first prayer I prayed in my room at the age of 12 did define my entire destiny. For me, it was more than just being the best academically now. I have encountered the real God. Amen. And in castle, I could I could engage that faith in every other area of my life, knowing well that God is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Now faith is the substance of peace or for the evidence of things not seen. Sorry, Hebrews, that's Hebrews 1, uh, the 11 one I just said. Substance of things not seen, for by it the elders of did not they obtain a good report. Verse 3 by faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God, and the things which do appear, or the things which are seen were not made of things which to appear amen when you get to verse 6 he said for by faith it is impossible to please him for whosoever cometh to us believe that he is and is what a reward of them that is gently seeking Mark chapter 9 verse 23 Mark 9 23 the Bible said if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe it. all things are possible Amen. All things are possible. That which we are looking on to go for to be a decree is a possibility. Yeah. I say I decree it is a possibility. Yeah. If a believer let your amen be louder. Yeah. Jesus was born via Mary. But there's an encounter in Luke chapter 1, verse 34. Luke 1, 34. An angel came to Mary and began to tell possible things. Uh, you shall, you, you shall um, have a child, his name shall be called Jesus. Mary said, how can these things be? I said, don't know a man, I'm not married. How can these things be a reality? <laughs> and the angel answered that the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, the power of the earth shall overshadow you. Therefore, the, the only thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. Now, this thing this man is saying, this angel is saying, is difficult to understand. Hallelujah completely very very difficult to understand but he went on and he was talking and by the time he was done talking can you continue the scripture please by the time he was done talking mary said from her heart be it unto me according to your word amen i think that's in verse 37 be it unto me according to thy word the angel departed from her meaning i might not understand the details of everything you are saying now but i believe I might not understand the details of what I am hearing now, but what? I believe, be it unto me according to your word. And it happened for her. Hallelujah. Faith. Faith. Very important. But now this is where we are landing this morning. Having understood these things, I just did a little brush up. It looks a little bit like what we said at the honor, right? So, eh? Is not it? But it's the same note I'm talking from. <laughs> all right. So, now, let's go to where we are landing today. All right? Now, in, in that same Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians 6, give me verse 14. Verse 14, there's a deep one there we want to combine with the shield of faith very quickly. Verse 15, verse 15, it says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. We just talked about faith as the, one of the most potent weapons above all, taking the shield of faith. But there is a heavy connection between the gospel of peace and faith. For example, in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, the Bible said, For I am ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto what? Unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, the power of God unto salvation to all that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. That word you call salvation there is the Greek word soteria, S-O-T-E-R-I-A. And many of us know that. And the word soteria does not just mean to be delivered from sin, but soteria also means 
Really? Soteria also means liberty. Soteria also means breakthrough. Soteria also means open doors. It means sound health. Amen. It means wholeness. It means prosperity. So the word salvation is talking about the wholeness of man. Everything that makes you well is what Christ died on the cross of Calvary to deliver unto you. And he said, I'm not ashamed of what? The gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto soteria. It's the power of God unto your deliverance. It's the power of God unto your breakthrough. It's the power of God unto what? Unto your lifting. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 6 verse 4, the disciples or the apostles at a particular point, there was a destruction. You see, Satan will get the church distracted. Do everything but don't settle on the world. You know? And many are distracted now. Do everything but don't settle on the world. In Acts chapter 6 verse 4, the Bible said that the apostles, when they saw the destruction because of distribution of food, uh, they, were, they, were, they were distributing food and the number of people multiplied and the church growth became a problem because it wanted to distract them from their major assignment. So Peter called the other disciples and said, it is not correct, give me verse 3. Not correct that we should we should leave the gospel and we should begin to serve tables. Can, can you go back to verse verse two, please? Verse two. Then the twelve called the most disciples of them and said, "It is no reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables." How important is that word? Then in verse four he said, "We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the world. Meaning, we will give ourselves to the declaration of the gospel. We will give ourselves continually to the declaration of the word of God. Why is it so important that the word of God should be declared in this way?" Romans chapter 10 verse 8. Are you following this morning at all? In Romans chapter 10 verse 8, I'm going to read that from verse 8. Romans 10 8. Follow carefully the, why the gospel is important that they will give themselves to the gospel and will not allow any distraction from the gospel. But what said it? The word is in thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Allah. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The word Soteria is appearing there again. Meaning, you shall be delivered, you shall be healed, you will be saved from your sin, from destruction, from affliction. For with the hearts, what happens? We believe, and with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Is there someone that believes in the Lord this morning? I prophesy you shall not be ashamed. I say, I prophesy you shall not be ashamed. In the name of Jesus. He now goes from there. Put the scripture on. He goes from there and he said, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. No difference. Our background is not our problem. The country we come from is not our problem. There's no difference. Now, for whosoever shall what? Call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But now, how then shall they call on him in whom they have no head? To get to believe, huh? but how does the shield of faith come if they have no head? And he goes further and said, Okay, let's start again. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How can they believe in him of whom they have not what? So you see, believe head, and how shall they hear without? How shall they hear without a preacher? That is why some of us are only important preachers of the world. In the morning we preach the word. In the afternoon we preach the word. Are you hearing me? Opportunity of naming ceremony we took word inside there. Uh, burial ceremony we took word inside there. Are, are you hearing me? I preached at my father's burial. He's lying down there, about to be buried. There's opportunity for souls to be arrested. The preaching of the gospel is said, and how shall they preach except they be saved? Hold on there. Somebody say, hey, finally, now, now they're saved. 
is a lie. There are two kinds of sending. <laughs> Number one is the general sending. And that general sending is recorded in the book of Matthew 28 verse 20. Jesus said, go into the world and make disciples of all nations. That is Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. In Mark 16, 15, Jesus said, go and into the world and preach the gospel to every world creature. Whosoever hears and is baptized shall be saved, but whosoever does not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. That was a general sending. Oh, sir, I don't think I am still part of that. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Who are those who are sent? Acts 1 8. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be my you shall be my I mean, if you are Holy Ghost baptized here. You have the Holy Ghost and you are up. Some people are not sure. If you are not sure, we are going to go back to you. You have the Holy Ghost and you are sure. Wave your hands high up. Wave your hands high up. He said, if you have received the Holy Ghost, then you are my witness. Meaning I have sent you. That's the general sending. So every one of us, we are sent to preach the gospel. Amen. That's general sent. Then we have the one that is called the calling, or you call the specific, and that's the one that happened to Paul on his way to Damascus in Acts chapter 9, give me Acts chapter 9 verse 15 to 16, very specific one, this one is not just that in your profession you are preaching the gospel, it's not just that at home you are preaching the gospel, it's not just that in your environment you are preaching the gospel, or ministering to souls on the street, but this one is said, he said to him, go your way for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel uh, and all that. So that one is specific. So by all means, every one of us has said, is that established now? Let's now go back to Romans chapter 10 and continue from where we stopped. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Romans 10, quickly, please. And how shall they push a side of the set? As it is written, look at now, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. So my feet are beautiful. Oh my God. It's not the gospel of, of hatred, but the gospel of what? Peace. You know the name of gospel of peace? Jesus said to the storm, peace, be still. The gospel of peace that comes to us. How beautiful are the feet of day that bring glad tidings of great days. And verse 15, no, verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For as I said, Lord, who has believed our report? Verse 17. So then, faith cometh by what? And what? And hearing by what? Hearing and hearing by what? So the seed of faith comes by hearing the gospel. So the, the, the gospel of peace is key to the seed of faith, and the seed of faith is key to the realm of all round possibilities. That means, if there is no one to preach it, you can't believe it. And if you can't believe it, you can't call upon God. And if you can't call upon God, you cannot receive it. That is why the ministry of the gospel, preaching the gospel of Christ, is very, very, very important. Listen to me. There is no Jew, there is no Greek, there is no Gentile. The same Lord is rich unto all. Meaning, the gospel gives us all opportunity to be at the same level. When the gospel is being preached, your tribe, your, your country, your, your, your family, but everything is dropped. Whether you are from a wealthy family or from a poor family, everything is dropped. The moment the gospel is going forth, every one of us have equal opportunity. But the problem is they have not all obeyed the word. So the difference that now appear in our lives is because we do not believe or obey the word at the same level. But when the word is coming, we are all having the same opportunity, but it is the way we believe it and we obey that determines what becomes of our lives. Mm. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Faith come by what? Hearing and hearing. Meaning, the reason why we hear is so that we can come to the point of belief. You know what I just said? Maybe every word I hear and I've not come to the point of believing, I have to go back and hear it again. That's why the Bible says hearing and hearing. 
that is until you come to the point where you believe and you are Yamalaka, you don't stop hearing. Are you hearing me? You don't stop hearing. The reason why some of us will continue to hear some dimension of word is because our faith needs to come alive in that realm. So we keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. You don't stop hearing until you are sure you believe. And how do you know you believe? You obey with ease. What you have believed, you are empowered to believe. And where you believe, you are empowered to become. What you believe, you are empowered to behave. And what you behave, you are what? You are empowered to become. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This is why the house of God must consistently, continually remain a center for the dispensing of the word. Because it's the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. Someone testified that the all night father and mother have been separated for about two years. And then in the course, I've been hearing declarations, then came in the course of the prayer and fasting. And one of the days, in the midst of the word, declaration came from the lips of God's servant. And I said, in the name of Jesus, that marital crisis is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. The same week, we received a call from the mom that the father has traced and located her, and then they are back together. While he was thinking it was a joke, one of the siblings also called and said, Daddy and Mommy have come back together. That is the power of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is what? The power of God, not of salvation. It's the power. How is it the power? It puts faith in men. And men can dare anything when faith is in place. Men can withstand the storm when faith is in place. Do you know at times when you hear the word like this, it's not as if the problem has disappeared physically. But by the time you are leaving the church after hearing the word, you are so sure that that problem is gone. I am Malikabri Atani Malaya. You are so sure that that challenge is gone. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is what? The power of the Lord unto salvation. Amen. Concluding in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. <coughs> Luke 4, 18 to 19. Look at Jesus, the, 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 the Son of God. He came to the earth. And he came with a mandate to save the world. Amen. But it was so amazing to me. That Jesus chose that he was going to carry this out. Amen. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Luke 4, 18. Don't mind this is their computer systems, the head can turn at times. So just open the real one. Look for 18. Oh, is someone blessed this morning at all? <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to push the gospel to the poor. Please, just take this one off until you rectify the other one. Amen. It's not okay. Open your hard copy Bible. It's not seeable. The, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? Preach the gospel to the poor. So whether poor spiritually and poor physically, Jesus said the solution is what? <laughs> The man is poor spiritually. What is the solution? Push the gospel. The man is poor physically. What is the solution? The man is in lack and want. What is the solution? It's very important. Because if I give you money, it's a good thing. Amen? But it can finish. But if I give you a word, it cannot finish. Did you hear what I just said now? It has the capacity to reproduce. Now, you see one thing I like about the word? The word defends itself. Ah, so when I look at you and I said, this is what the word of the Lord said, maybe somebody in your office is so down. He said the children are where what he doesn't know what to do. You don't need to be thinking that the anointing of Pastor Cornelius to lay us on the 
thing. What you need to do is let me share the word of God with you. Look for it till it's more than enough. The feet of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor. Ah, and it's there also to set at liberty the captives, to set at liberty then the abuse, to open the eyes of the blind, to heal the broken hearted. What category do you fall inside, sir? You say, I'm broken hearted. Then he preached the gospel. You give him the word and leave him. You will shocked on that few weeks how things will begin to change around his life. The problem people have is you are trying to help the word come to pass. You have the capacity to help it. All you need to do is expose it. When the word of God is exposed, it becomes an explosive. Do you hear what I said? When you, I am a He says, if you are broken hearted, push the word. If you are a prisoner, push the word. That is, if the person is in captivity, push the word. The person is sick, do what? Preach the word. The sickness is one day, preach the word. Headache, preach the word. Cancer, preach the word. Tuberculosis, preach the word. Barrenness, preach the word. Poverty, chronic poverty, please, preach the word. Depression, preach the word. The, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is what the power of God unto salvation to all them that believe. To all them that believe. So the question this man is, do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? And the word you are hearing this morning is becoming your miracle. I said the word you are hearing right now this morning is becoming your miracle. Somebody shout, I believe Lord. Shout Lord, I believe Lord. One more time, shout, I believe Lord. The most powerful man on earth is not the one that carried machine guns. It's not the one that carry all manner of bombs. It's the man that carries the most powerful machinery. And that is the gospel. That is the gospel. Do you know atomic bomb? Have you heard of an atomic bomb during the First World War? Where Japan went and bombed Pearl Harbor when America was busy on 25th of December celebrating their Christmas. They didn't want to join the war. Japan went and, and did something there and killed people. And so America stepped in. The war had lasted from the, the, the year 1812 uh, and this was going to 1816 thereabout. It was a four year period of war. And, and that um, period was the third year crossing into the fourth year. America was not involved. But when they were not physically involved, when that thing happened, America decided to test run what we call the atomic bomb. Uh, and it, although the first place they wanted to test run it, it, it didn't end up where they test run it. They test run it on two major cities in Japan called Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And you need to go and read the history of those places. When it landed, ah, bam, and spread, it melted the town so bad that it, it affected their genetic formation. That is, if children are being born there, the child can come out without one hand because of bomb from 18 something. That is powerful, is that not so? <laughs> very, very powerful. Fishes are not normal there. Amen. Natural resources because of one bomb that landed in the, in the city. Amen. But that was 18 something and it affected only two places. Amen. But 2,000 years ago, someone came by name Jesus, the living world, and he hung on the cross and said, I'm dying at one spot now to give my life for the world. Ah, yeah. And as I do this now, it may look as if it's in one corner in the land of Jerusalem, but watch what will happen. 2,000 years later, no country in the whole world where there is not somebody who has been affected by that gospel. This one didn't remain in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This one spread around the world. Are you hearing something? It spread around the world. So between atomic bomb and Jesus bomb, who is more powerful? 
I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is what the power of God unto salvation. Listen to me, do you know as I'm standing here, I'm the product of many words, and it's possible that the person who spoke the word that affected my life is not aware there is a boy called Cornelius. Yet the gospel affected me. And I know there are many persons around the world, their lives have changed by the gospel, their everything has changed family, but yet I don't know them. You understand? I don't know them, but they know me. They said, this boy spoke a word. What a power can that be? What a power can that be? It is the greatest power on earth. I can start the reason why I can minister to you here. If I go to Zafara, I present the same word. Uh, if, I, if I go to Bansi, the same word. If I go to Josh, the same word. If I go to Nokoda, the same word. If I step outside the nation, the same word. Why we were invited to minister to Pakistani people, the same word, the same power, the same effect, the same result. Blind eyes open there, blind eyes open there. Are you hearing me? A person council here, a person council in Pakistan. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Please rise up on your feet. I am not ashamed. Listen to me, brother. Are you sitting in church? I've come to present you the most powerful. Yes, you need a shield of faith, but you hear the word, and then the shield of faith comes alive. And by that shield, you can take any mountain. I am a kosepeli katami na labaya katam. Exposure to the word is exposure to power. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I will preach some more. Some people think I preach too much, but I will preach some more. I am about to become a roller coaster preacher. Are you hearing me? I'm about to become a roller coaster preacher. When there is no time, I will preach the word. When there is plenty time, I will preach the word. In the morning, I will preach the word. In the night time, I will preach the word. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the of God unto salvation. Lift up your hands right now. I'm praying the spirit, everybody. Come on now. Come on now. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Come on now. Pray in the spirit. Come on now. Pray in the spirit. Maya ya ya le keto kubari ya te sila baya. Lika bara te kete belia. Le bara to si mene ya bara ta. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation, unto deliverance, unto liberty, unto healing. I So sister, things are not going well. Apart from jumping from pillar to post to find out what is the problem, this prophet, tell me what's the problem. Begin to organize Bible studies around the family. Let us find out what God has said. Collect messages like this and sit the whole family down and broadcast it. By the time your younger brother or elder brother catch the fire, you caught his plus one. His plus one. Because if there are many, we can fight well. 
if we can believe the same thing, we can have quick results. An evangelist by the name Yabekaya Am went to do a crusade many years ago. He rented equipment, did everything, arranged for crusade. Nobody came. About three or four days, he was the priest. He pushed into the air. He was down. That is things and said this crusade was a failure. One of the areas there was a boy sitting down, small boy, 16, 15 years old, and he was worried what this man was putting into the air. And at the time he was born, he committed his life to Christ without coming on that ground. So at times you think it's just those that come for that call that got born again, but no, sir. <laughs> this boy happened to be Billy Graham. So he thought he was doing crusade to see souls saved. He didn't know that by leading that boy to Christ, he led generations to Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the plan of God to salvation. Everything you are trusting God for is available in His word. My assignment is to speak forth His word. Coupled with his anointing that he has placed upon my life by his mercies. And I decree in the name of Jesus, everything that God can afford and you can believe becomes your person from this moment. Ah, the amen is not a believer's amen. Everything that God can afford and your faith can touch it. I decree receiving now in the name of Jesus. Now can I give you the next one minute to pray in the spirit because when you pray in the spirit, listen to this, listen to this. One of the ways faith will come up is that while you are praying in the spirit, the, the word of God that you are being hearing will begin to, it will begin to, 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 to just mix up inside of you. And then there will be an explosion and faith will come alive. So if you pray just for the next one minute, then you will reach the point where I will make prophetic declarations because you will be at the point of faith and anything can happen. So the blood can start flowing now. You can drop your eyeglass now. Cancer can disappear now. Goodness can end now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Pray in the Holy Ghost.
Jesus Christ we pray Lift up your hands to right now <laughs> Do you believe you are about to receive it now? Do you believe you are about to receive it now? Now in the name of Jesus Every mountain before your hands is not born I've long around I've had that mountain for too long. You have been going around the cycle. Baliata, Mira, Kaliata, Lika, Teke, Peleke, Tesike, Pepeleata. The Lord is showing me something right now. I see a group of persons holding their hands and they are going around the mountain, going around the mountain. All of a sudden I can see a force and somebody broke out of that cycle. Shake I command, come out of that cycle. 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 I am a man. 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 Come out of that cycle. 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 Come out from that cycle. Come out from that cycle. Come out from that cycle. In the name of Jesus. I got one more thing. Let me do something. Lift up the hands. If that's the only thing that happens. You will break out of that circle. It is time to break forward. It is time to break forth. I'm going to count one to seven. And when I count seven, you shall break. That cycle is about to break. That cycle is about to break. I say that cycle is about to break. I am the ghetto. The status quo is over. It is time to go forward. It is time to enter the I am calling the mean of the Kaiser. Let her have the claim of the Kaiser. It is time for new experiences. It is time for new beginnings. At the count of seven, let it break. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break.
any way you might be connected to this service. You have not surrendered your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have tried a lot of things, but why not allow Jesus to have his place in your heart? Anywhere you are in this auditorium, and you want me to pray for you, for Jesus to come into your heart, for your life to take a new turn, for him to decorate your life, give you a future and a destiny, and also for him to prepare a good home for you in heaven after now. Please place your right hand on your chest if you want to pray that for you. It's a personal affair. I'm going to count one to five. The gospel is more than enough. It's the gospel of Christ. But like you heard, until you obey what he said, we cannot help you. Jesus can come into your heart now and change everything about you. Place your hand on your chest. God bless you. One. Two. Call you one to five. I'm not going to be calling you out. Our officers will just come close to you where you are and they are going to move you. The most important thing is that from the depth of your heart, you really, really, really do release yourself to God. Free! Not ashamed of the gospel of God is a part of them. Four! Don't allow today to pass you by. Let Jesus have his faith. If you put your hand on your chest, where you are, please repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I come to you. Save me. Wash by your first blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary for my sake for my sake say Jesus have mercy on me from today make me yours and I remain yours forever in Jesus name keep the hand on your chest let me pray for you Father, I pray for this one. Grace upon grace upon grace. Grace that keeps. Grace that establishes. It will release in Jesus' name. And now I decree every yoke. Every bondage, every addiction. Everything struggling in your life. Everything fighting your destiny is destroyed in Jesus' name. And your liberty is released at the sound of my voice. Every taste for anything that is not of God dies now. In the name of Jesus.